Today I'm going to show you guys how to SSH tunnel. For those of you who don't know what SSH tunneling is, it is basically encrypting your network traffic over an SSH connection. Now there's a couple reasons why you want to use an SSH tunnel. Uh, one of those would be to secure your web traffic. Now I know a lot of you probably either use unsecured wireless or you you use networks that you're not completely familiar with and there's always security risks associated with that. Uh, you don't know if there's someone on the network who is sniffing your data and possibly even pulling plain text username and passwords. Another reason is to get around web filters. Now I know a lot of you probably either go to school or work at a place that has an overprotective web filter and that filter is so intense that it actually prevents you from doing things you need to do in the day to day. So an SSH tunnel will help you get around these two things. An SSH tunnel basically takes all of your traffic and it sends it to, encrypts it with an SSH connection, sends it to your external server where it's decrypted and it sends out the web request and the response is the same way as once you receive a response it encrypts that response, sends it back over an SSH connection to your, your computer where it decrypts it. Now this makes it secure because if someone is able to pull packets in that connection to try and sniff your connection all they'll get is encrypted data and they won't be able to read it. Same applies to a web filter. Uh, the web filter, when it tries to look at your network traffic, it'll just see that that you have HTTP, or it won't even see that you have an HTTP request. It'll just get encrypted data that it can't read, and so it effectively ignores it, and you go around the web filter that way. So you'll need a couple things to be able to do this SSH tunnel. One, you'll need a browser, obviously. Uh, now, browser can be pretty much any browser. Um, we use Firefox for this. I've done this in Safari. You know, I'm pretty sure you can do it in Chrome, so it's really up to you. However, for simplicity's sake, we'll just show you Firefox. You also need a program that can connect, that can SSH into your Linux server. I use Sigwin. Um, Putty is a common program as well, but I really like Sigwin. Um, this is the Sigwin Bash shell, which you can download. Just Google Sigwin, and you can download that with no problem. Um, now, Sigwin comes with a lot of different options when you download it and install it. Um, just a bunch of different packages you can install. However, the SSH tunnel, all you really need is the SSH, um, SSH package, and you're good. All right. Besides that, you're going to need a, an external server running Linux. Um, and when I say external, I basically mean any server outside of the network that you're currently on. All right. And so once you have this up, uh, we're going to start this connection. However, first I want to show you so you can see what the change is, is we'll look up my IP address right now. And we look that up, and we get my IP address here. Uh, I'm currently on my university's network, which is filtered. And so I'll show you the filter. Um, here's a website that they feel that I should not be looking at. I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with piratebay.org. So according to them, this is not a good website for me. You shouldn't go here. So you can see that I'm being filtered. So what we'll do is we go into SIGWIN over here and we'll do an SSH connection. So we start out with SSH like normal and you do a dash capital D 8080. Now what that says is all traffic on my local host that is going to port 8080 will be going over this SSH connection. 8080 is just an arbitrary number. You can use whatever you want, whatever number you want, as long as it's not you know, 80, 25, 21, 22, the standard protocols that are, or standard ports that are used. After that we do some arguments. And these arguments, um, you can look them up on the man page to see which one does individually, but basically what it does is it runs this program in the background and it compresses the data. After that, we do our standard login and we hit enter. Now it asks us for our password, just like any other SSH connection. When that pops up, we put in a password like usual, hit enter, and we're done. Now since this SSH connection is running in the background. Once we hit enter, nothing else pops up. So to check, we can run a top, and you can see that we have an SSH connection running right here. So we close out of this, and this part is all done. The whole bat, the whole connection is fine. Now we need to set up Firefox to use that proxy that we just set up. So we go down to options, we go down to advanced network settings, and we go to manual proxy configuration. Now what we'll be doing down here, usually that's empty, you see the SOX host. Now the proxy we set up is a SOX proxy, so we'll be using that. So here we'll type in localhost as we have the proxy running on our local server. And the port will be 8080 or whatever number you decide to put in when you do that connection. Uh, make sure SOX 5 is enabled and you should be good to go. Hit OK. Hit OK. And we'll double check it. We'll hit what is my IP again? And there we go. This is the IP of my external server. So it now thinks that all my connections are running out. Well, they are running out of my external server. It thinks that I'm there. 
Uh, to prove that, we'll try good old Pirate Bay again. And... Connection's running a little slow. There we go. We can see that we're on Pirate Bay right now. So that's really it. There's not too much to it. Um, to close out of this proxy, all you have to do is close whatever programs are in the SSH connection and make sure you set Firefox to not be using a proxy anymore. This SSH tunnel is great. I've loved it. Um, you can actually set up really almost anything to run it through here. You can use it for multiple applications. You can have, if you use something such as Outlook or Firebird, or sorry, Thunderbird, any other mail client, you can have your mail client running through this proxy. I've used it for games, you can use it for torrenting. Uh, basically anything that can set it to a proxy, you can use this um, you can use this uh, procedure, this process, to be able to get secure connections. Um, also, speed, I haven't noticed any really any slowdown in speed. As long as your server runs a faster network, either a faster or just as fast connection as your normal connection, you shouldn't see any slowdown at all. If your server is on a slower connection than your normal internet, obviously you'll see a bit of a slowdown. But that's really it. Um, if you have any questions at all, you can leave them in the comment section. And if you like it, uh, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks again.